crow overhead. <laughs> yeah? Bet you didn't know I could talk to crows. This one's pretty straightforward. It's just framing color on the wash. Lots, lots of color. Uh, it's just a line of trees that is showing every color in the whole range, you know, everything from greens to yellows to oranges and reds. It's really, it's really a nice display of color. But more than that, it's also getting a lot of light bouncing in, reflecting off of these sandstone buttes in the background here. So it's just a good combination for color reversal film. And that's what I'm shooting right now is another roll of Velvia 50. Roll because I'm using my 6x12 film back here to give me kind of a panorama crop of this. And it's just real simple. It's just color on the top and then the bottom of the frame just got a sliver of the white rocks in a wash. I don't really feel like I have a ton of stuff in my catalog that has just, you know, a good showing of just the color in the trees, you know. So that's kind of, even though this is really simple, uh, it's just something that's kind of a hole in my catalog right now. So I thought it looked really good and it was a good time to shoot it. So I figured I better, better get to it. I framed this up with my 75 millimeter Fujinon f5.6 lens. It was pretty wide for large format, so I got a really nice wide view of all these trees here. Might be able to see in the leaves behind me here, there's just a little bit of a breeze coming through the wash here too, so it was just a timing game, trying to make sure I'd wait until I get most of the branches to be still. And there's such a wide you know, swath of trees here that it's kind of almost impossible to get everything to lay perfectly still for you know the whole second long exposure. Metering was pretty simple again. I just stuck a gray card out there and took an exposure off of that. Seems most of these like lighter colored rocks in the washes, usually somewhere around a stop, stop and a third usually is pretty good on those. It seems like from past experience, but I've camped out for long enough until everything got relatively calm and I was able to get that exposure, which was one second at F22. But yeah, I was actually on my way walking down here to go somewhere else to check on another scene and I just saw that this was good conditions and good for shooting right now, so I figured I better go ahead and grab it. And now I'm gonna boogie on that way and see what else I can find. So here are those two exposures. And while the Velvia effect did go a little strong on these ones, it is just about what I expected. There is a bit of blue cast in the foreground rocks in the wash, as well as the gray tones in the branches within the trees. It's not uncommon to have to pull those blue tones down just a little bit, and that adjustment is pretty easy to do. The other thing I'll point out is a little bit of vignetting in the corners of the frame, which depending on the subject, usually isn't that noticeable with this lens, but in this case, that fall off in exposure resulted in the neutral tones of the wash going even more blue. But once I toned down the blues, that should be less noticeable. But overall, it was exactly what I was going for, just a strip of fall color, and a little bit of the wash to anchor the scene, and I think the shot fits the 6x12 format quite well. But here's my edits, and as always, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Most of the time you come to Zion in the fall because it's just a world-class, awesome display of fall color. And, you know, the red sandstone and reflected light. Yeah, it's just a beautiful place. But, but every so often, you know, you find something that looks interesting that isn't necessarily fall color. Or in this case, it's something that hasn't transitioned yet. So but I've got this stand of oak trees right behind me here. What attracted me to it is that it is green, but it's because it's green in front of a big, huge sandstone rock wall behind it. So you have a lot of color contrast here. And to me, I think this works because of the color contrast with it being green. If it had started to turn color, like yellows and maybe some browns or something, that would get lost against this reddish orange sandstone in the background. So I'm shooting it because it's not peak fall color. I like the look of oak trees with other gnarly looking, snarly branches and interesting shapes they make. And I'm also in the wash shooting up at the tree. So I'm underneath it a little bit, which means it reveals the underside of the branches a little more. I think it 
a little bit of structure that it provides is interesting to look at. Now it comes with some challenges. You know, naturally when you're looking up with a camera, you're playing a focus shifts along with it. But in this case, that kind of helps a little bit. Naturally, because I'm so much lower than the tree, the, the root system on the bottom, you know, is closer to me than the very top of the tree is. So when I lean back like that, of course, then your lines don't stay parallel. So, you know, that would matter if you're shooting architecture or something, this would give you horrible converging or diverging lines. But in this case, it's a tree. So I'm not too worried about that. But this particular rock wall has got a slope to it. And on this side, there's a little patch of blue sky that's been peeking into my composition. I'm not entirely sure what I got away from that. There might be just a sliver of blue sky in the very corner of the composition. If there is, I can easily crop that out or fix it. I played around trying to decide if I wanted to include the root system or not, but ultimately just ended up focusing on the, the top branches instead. I framed this up with my 180 millimeter Fujinon f5.6. I took two shots on Provia 100F, and those shots were two seconds at f32. First one was actually f32 and a third, but my light had changed just a little bit, and I added an extra third stop to compensate for that. But yeah, I thought it was a cool photograph. I'm glad to have this in the bag. This is a composition I actually found last year, but I really struggled with it because, you know, the color of the tree had transitioned more towards fall color, so it didn't really stand out quite as well. So this year I'm happy to see that it's green, and seems to work much better. But here's those exposures. And as always, let me know down in the comments what you think. Now I know this isn't the kind of photo that a lot of people would expect to see from Zion National Park in the fall, but I was pretty happy with the way this turned out. I like the way the green tones stand out against the reddish orange sandstone in the background. And the shadows and some of these smaller shrubs did take on a little bit of a cyan tone, which I don't really mind so much. I was worried that the tree trunks themselves would take on more of that blue tone or go black and lose detail, but I was happy to see that those turned out just fine. I was also happy to see that I managed to keep the sky from protruding in on the top left corner. I might have actually preferred to have just a little bit more breathing room at the top edge of the frame, but of course I was pinned in because of the slope of the background. Overall, maybe not your typical Zion fall photo, so I'm curious to know what you think, but here's my edits, and let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. So set up on another wider view of the wash, and on the right hand side there's a bunch of colorful trees on it. It's been kind of the theme today, just shooting lots of color with a wide angle lens. In this case it's my 75mm Fujinon at 5.6 again. Now framed it wide enough to capture an entire grove of maple trees. There is one oak tree in here that's green, hasn't quite transitioned yet. But I've got kind of a range, you know, from yellow all the way to reddish orange. It's too bad that oak hadn't turned color too, it might have looked pretty cool. But I've included a little bit of the sandstone embankment here on the left. And there's a little small evergreen tree that's kind of anchoring the left hand side of the frame. So I took two exposures on Velvia 50, one with and one without an 81B warming filter. The first one I didn't feel like I needed it because I had some, had a really big light source up here off one of these buttes that was bouncing light into the scene and looked pretty warm. But I am starting to lose that because I'm right near sunset right now. So the intensity was a lot lower on the reflected light I was getting. So the second shot, I put my warming filter on. The first shot was two seconds, F22. Second one was three seconds, F22, accounting for that uh, warming filter. And then I took a backup shot on Provia 100F, also with the warming filter, also at three seconds. Now granted, that film is one stop faster speed than Delvia, uh, but my light had changed that much that I decided to go ahead and leave it at three seconds and expose an extra stop of light. But I really liked the textures and the sandstone above this composition and the way that it was glowing. It was kind of more orangey glow earlier. I hope I captured that okay. But I think this is going to be my last frames because now my light's gone. Uh, so I'm probably done for the night, I think. It's starting to get a little chilly too, so I think it's time to back the camera down and head on towards camp, find myself some dinner. So the two Velvia exposures ended up going a little bit dark. 
I was trying to be careful not to blow out the highlights and the white rock in the foreground, and that resulted in the shadows being probably about two-thirds of a stop underexposed. But it isn't so bad that I can't boost the exposure and recover that in post. You can pretty clearly tell the difference between the one that was taken with the 81B warming filter and the one that was not. But an even bigger difference was the Provia image. It was taken after the previous two and had even less reflected light, but the additional stop resulted in a better exposure. Unfortunately, I'm not overly excited with the foreground in this photo. The arrangement of the rocks and the wash isn't visually appealing to me, and there's quite a few footprints. It just makes the sand look muddy and messy. On top of that, there's a little bit of sky poking in on the top left, as well as a bit of flaring as a result of that. But I do like the display of color, and the middle portion of the frame looks like it's spaced appropriately and isn't crowding the edges of the frame too badly with this small shrub or the right-hand side of this tree. So since most of the things I don't like are on the top and bottom, I may try to crop this into a different aspect ratio, possibly something a little more panoramic. But as always, let me know what you think down in the comments, and here's my edit. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by hitting that thumbs up button down below. And if you want to make sure you catch the rest of the videos from my Zion series, make sure you hit that subscribe button while you're down there. Special thanks to my Patreon patrons. Your support is greatly appreciated. And if you'd like to know more about how you can help support this channel, make sure you check out those links in the description. Thanks as always for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Subscribe.